Good morning, Mystic Fitness. So glad for you to join us today. We are here every weekday morning at 8 o'clock, every weekend morning at 9 o'clock. We are also offering uh, outdoor classes at 4 p.m. on Saturday and 6 p.m. on Wednesday. Um, we are both on live stream and um, on Victory field in, field in the mornings. So please join us whenever you can. We'd love to have you. This morning, I'll invite you into a comfortable place, wherever you are. Over here, we are luxuriating with the feeling of grass and ground and the sounds of the crickets and the birds. Take a deep in breath. And sigh it out. One more time. As you continue to invite the waves of breath and invite them to enliven your experience, inner experience, maintain awareness of the ground and continue to resource the earth. This idea of resourcing. We are part of this organic life. And sometimes we forget and we begin to act as if we are separate from it. So just remembering that we are part of this organic life and we have the earth to resource from. Feel your sits bones or whatever parts of your body that are connected to the earth. Sink further down. And imagine that the points of contact are like magnets pulling through the earth into your body. And also a resource the heart space, open it up to invite the light. That light can be imaginary or for me here on my left, there's a peaking sun through the trees. And it's beautiful to leverage that light. Let it feel as if it is entering the crown of the head and entering your heart soothing the nervous system, soothing the body. Breath in, breath out. Take three more breaths together, softening the belly, and softening the chest, and opening the heart. And as you slowly make your way into some movements to awaken the senses, 
invite your bodies eventually into a seated position so that we can open the practice together. <coughs> And as you arrive into seated, start to rub the palms together and place your hands on top of your chest, maybe one hand over the belly. And now resource the togetherness aspect of this practice. And that's a beautiful thing to leverage, to sense that you're not alone, that you are with a group of people, even if you're not here with us on the field. Sense that you're together with us and with those who are practicing from home. And with that sense of togetherness, there's a warm and cozy feeling that arises. And we'll take that together with the sound of Om, a cleansing breath, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Om. if they're closed and start to expand the arms overhead and bring them back down just a couple of times getting into your shoulders and then circle your shoulders around a few times maybe rotate the neck around And then expand the arms sideways, make fists, circle your wrists around. And in the other direction. Shake up your hands. And make your way into some seated side bends. So we're gonna Activate the left fingertips onto the ground as you reach your right arm all the way up towards the sky. Notice I'm sitting in a hero pose because it's comfortable for me. Some of you might enjoy a easy sitting pose instead with blocks underneath you. And as you bend to the right, know that I am actually opposite from you when I say right for those of us who are on live stream and keep going back and forth back to center and then another side bend and after you do that you know maybe three to five times come back to center and do it on the other side back and forth some of us enjoy holding this stretch longer and I'll give you another tip some of us like to press the hip to the opposite side of the bend activating that sits bones into the ground a couple more times wonderful and now make your way into table and do some arches and curls.
Keep incorporating the neck into the mix. Some days you might feel that you need more activity around your lower back and some days you might need more activity around your upper back or neck. Take your time to release your left, uh, your right elbow to the ground, your right forearm to the ground. And as you press into your left hand like a kickstand, shift your weight into your right leg and lift that left leg off the ground so that you're bending and extending the leg. And as you're bending and extending the leg, you might circle the ankle around. And then you might also switch the bending and extending by bringing knee towards the arm and then extending the leg back. Or you might start to circle and rotate throughout the hip. And switching directions. And after you've done that, take your way to the other side and do the same thing. And listen to your body in knowing how it should move. One side might be different than the other. You'll notice what the other side needs that the body will just tell you. When you feel ready to come back to the center, make your way to the center. Release your forearms to the ground, separate the knees a little wider, and kind of rock your hips side to side. Maybe shift back and forth. Maybe circle hips. Making your way into a child pose. As you expand into child pose, some of you might not reach the heels with the hips. You don't wanna force that, there's no need for that. You might simply stack your hips on top of your knees and just relax down to the ground or place a block under your forehead. And once again, finding that resourcing Resourcing from the earth that really nourishes the body, nourishes the soul. And give yourself that gift. And if we can bring ourselves to balance on a daily basis by leveraging the gifts that we have to leverage, then we don't get as overwhelmed. Couple more breaths, in and out. Wonderful, make your way back into table now. And as you curl your toes under, expand yourself back into downward dog. And take your time to make any adjustments that you need. The placement of the feet. The rocking of the hips. 
maybe a shifting back and forth. Slowly allow your bodies to come into a forward fold. You might walk your feet forward or you might walk your hands back, depending on what feels better on your body. And letting that forward fold be felt in a way that is appropriate to your body. Some of us might decide that it feels better to place elbows on thighs as you drop down into a little bit of a squat. And after you feel the full effect of this forward fold, it's so nourishing. There is this inversion aspect to it that allows your nervous system to calm and it's very grounding. Activate the feet into the ground and slowly roll upwards a little bit at a time. Let there be this expression of the arms overhead as you once again kind of stretch the body. And then at one point, take your way into some rotational motions around the spine. Letting the arms be free. Maybe even tapping yourself on the opposite arm with the opposite hand. <sighs> allowing the breath to flow freely and also allowing that tapping to wake the body up. Wake the body up. Beautiful. As you return back to the center, let the feet restack underneath so that a is hip distance apart and allow the arms to reach overhead for a deep in breath. You might look up. Let the arms go backwards just a little bit for an opening throughout the heart. And then as you return back to the center into neutral, bow forward for a forward fold. Inhale for a half lift. And exhale as you plant the palms down and step back to find a plank pose. Let the activity of that press away from the ground be felt through the glutes and the quads. And then slowly take your time into a shataranga, maybe releasing the knees first to lower down halfway or all the way down. I've kind of trained myself to do a little bit of a push-ups up and down before coming all the way down to the ground. That just feels good to me. Some of you might decide to do that as well. Once you find your way all the way to the earth, Preparing for Cobra, there is this process that happens where you activate your feet into the ground and draw the heart open as you lift through the chest. There is a squeezing of the shoulder blades muscles towards one another. Find the glutes and engage them as well. And start to kind of luxuriate in every pose so that you're really getting the effect of it and the nourishment from it without rushing and expecting the next pose to come. Pressing yourself up through your table, maybe to downward dog. There's an opportunity once again to either hold a static down dog or pedal and move around a bit.
And what is it like to kind of taste the practice as if you're tasting every bite of your food? To actually taste each pose fully in your body? It's pretty impactful because it can actually teach us to taste our lives one day at a time, one moment at a time. This fleeting, fleeting moment can actually be observed and experienced. Take your right leg to the sky with a deep in-breath. On the out-breath, bring the knee towards the chest and curl shoulders over the wrists. In as you elongate the leg. Out as you bring the knee towards the chest. Step the right foot towards right thumb and lift through the chest into crescent. Bend the back knee, allow the back knee to feel that kind of tucking under and you might need to move your back foot forward or to the side the arms can be upwards or in goal post or the arms can actually come to heart space notice what feels really good for your body right now Thanks, Amy. <laughs> Good. Now take the arms sideways and bend the back knee so that you can feel that tucking under. Now draw the back heel back, kind of like arching through the spine. So you're losing that tucking. Take a deep in breath. On the out breath, tuck again bringing those fingertips towards one another and looking down towards the belly. Inhale, open. And exhale, curl. Inhale, open. And exhale, curl. Let's do that two more times. In and out. Notice how my back knee is bending and extending. In and out. Last one, in and out. Good job. Now, as you open up, reach those arms overhead. Feel that opening in the heart with a deep in breath. And on the out breath, open up into warrior two. And allow the warrior two to give your hands a break, your wrists a break by circling them around essentially extending arms apart and reversing the warrior for a deep in-breath. On the out-breath, return to the center and allow the left hand to come to the outside of the hip, pressing the hip back a little bit so that you're really allowing this kind of activity of that left hand to press back as you hinge towards the knee and expand the right arm all the way through to the side. As if I'm giving you an assist and actually pressing that hip back, you're giving it to yourself. And from here, you'll release the right arm down, activate the arm into the leg and really open up into your side angle. So this activity of leg against arm, arm against leg, without collapsing down towards the ground, leveraging the pose. Come back to your warrior two and reverse it with an in-breath. On the out breath, cartwheel the hands down. Find your way into runner lunge. In your runner lunge, allow your heart to kind of hover on top of your thigh. Activate that heel back a little bit more. 
And coming back up into your crescent with a deep in-breath, the palms come together. You hinge forward, taking those hands to the outside of the right thigh. And then you activate the left hand against the right thigh to open up deeper into a twist to the right. Good job. As the palms close, you release the breath. As you inhale, you come on back up to center, bend the back knee, tuck pelvis under, circle the arms around, and as you, you're taking them into this biceps curl, bend the back knee and tuck that pelvis under even more. Come on back up, do it again. Inhale, exhale, inhale, twist, exhale, close. Inhale, rise. Exhale, bend and tuck and tuck and tuck and curl. Good job. Let's do that three more times. Two more. Last time. Good job. Now as you lower down, hold, hold, hold. Squeeze glutes for five, four, three, two, one. Lower the back knee all the way down to the ground and extend that front leg forward for a half split. And maybe you bend and extend. That might feel better for some of us. Now I'm going to get you guys up into a balance on that right leg. So listen up. As you return into a runner lunge, curl the back toes under. Feel your weight. Leverage it in that right foot. Feel all corners of that right foot ground down into the ground. Lift and separate the toes. Feel the balls of the foot. And then slowly shift your weight into it to come into first this standing split and eventually bend the back knee, bend the front knee, shift your hips back like you're in a chair pose, activate your right foot into the ground, palms come to heart space and you rise into balance. Left knee comes up to the chest. Good job. Cross the ankle up and over and sink back again into balance. You might stay where you are or you might sink further back. Notice how my left foot is flexed, toes towards shin. My shoulders are relaxed. For five, four, three, two, one. Take your time to come on back up to your balance. Left knee to the chest. We're not done yet. We're gonna bend again, draw the left leg back, extend it all the way back, and land again into your crescent. Once you get there, you're framing your front foot with your hands, and eventually expanding the right leg all the way back in a three-legged dog. Maybe you shake it up. Or maybe you bend the knee and open up through the hip. I 
at some point returning into a downward facing dog. Once you get there, shift forward again into a plank. Dial your heels to the left. Open up into a side plank for one in breath. On the out breath, you're returning back to your plank, lowering the knees, taking a push up, lifting the knees for plank, and then dialing the heels to the right for another side plank. In breath, out breath back to center, lower knees, push up, lift knees, in breath to the other side. And we keep going. Breathe in and dial to the side. Let's do that a few more times. You might keep the knees off the ground as you go back and forth. One more time on each side. Good. Now coming into Cobra or your upward dog. Find that opening, hold it wherever you are. And then transition back to downward dog. We're gonna need to give our wrists a little bit of loving once we get back to our crescent. Reach the left leg up towards the sky with a deep in breath. On the out breath, knee comes towards the chest. Inhale again, elongate. And exhale, knee to chest, step foot to left thumb. Bend back knee, tuck pelvis under, rise up. Make fists with your hands to circle your wrists around. and shake up those hands. Open up the palms, bend the back knee, tuck the pelvis under, feel that tucking, and now untuck by opening through the chest and expand the back leg. Inhale, on the exhale, tuck again, and curl. Let's do it again, in, and out. Three more. Last one. Palms come together, reach all the way up, open up. And then dial the back heel down for warrior two. Take the shoulders up and down now just a few times. Let the shoulders kind of release. And then as you activate your feet into the ground further, reverse your warrior, keep your weight in that opposite leg, in that left leg. Wonderful. Come back to the center and let's do the same thing again. Here we are taking the right hand to the right hip, pressing it back and lengthening towards the left as much as you can before finding that side angle. Opening up to the side. Notice if your shoulders are stressed, relax. Shoulders are relaxed, good. One more deep inhale. On the exhale, return back to the center. Reverse the warrior, one more in breath. On the out breath, cartwheel the hands down. Make your way into runner lunge, hovering. And once you get there, 
Let that heart kind of lift and regain the lifting upwards as you bend the back knee. As the palms come together, you'll take the twist up and over the left thigh and activating right hand against the left thigh, you'll open up into a twist. That activation of the right hand is really key here. It's gonna help you twist further. Bring the palms together. Inhale, rise, bend back knee, tuck that pelvis under, circle the arms through, and dip. Inhale, rise. Exhale, twist. Inhale, twist deeper from the mid back. Exhale, release. Inhale, rise, activate that left heel into the ground. Circle, 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 and dip. Again, three more. Two more. Let the burn be felt in that left glute. It's yummy. It's a yummy burn. It's strengthening your body. If it's a cramp, you can shake it up a little. <laughs> Mine is cramping up. <sighs> Last time, you guys. Circle, 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 hold. We're still hovering with that right knee. Squeeze glutes, squeeze inner thighs for three, two, one. Release the right knee, extend the left leg forward and find that half split. Some of us might enjoy the back and forth like myself. Now, returning back into your runner lunge. Remember what we're doing next. We are balancing on that left leg. Activate all corners of that left foot into the ground. Shift your weight into it. Stay strong in it like a chair pose on one leg. Palms come together right away. And the right knee comes up towards the chest. Cross the right ankle on top of left thigh. Either stay here, feeling that communion with the earth, or shift back for a little bit of a stretch here, like a pigeon standing. As you rise back up, the right knee comes up to the chest. We're not done. Bend the left knee. Sink back. Lengthen the right leg. And then land in your runner lunge. From here, take it back in a three-legged dog. Maintaining the activity of the hands onto the ground, either shaking up the left leg we're opening it up through the hip. As you release the foot back down to the ground, shift forward in a plank pose. Lower down onto your forearms. Hold your forearm plank. Squeeze your glutes and quads. Tuck pelvis under. And then come back up to your plank in a really strong way. Maybe the knees come down, maybe they don't. 
good job. Hold here, press the floor away. Feel the burn in your core center and come on down to your forearms. We're just trying to change it up a little. Now come on back up to your plank. You guys feel it yet? Good, draw the chest forward a little bit more. How about you guys on live stream? Are you cheating? Can't see you. Let's come on down onto your forearms one last time, you guys. Stay with me. Tuck pelvis under. Draw chest forward. Feel your own strength. Last time, back up to plank. Let's go. Do it together. Five, four, three, two, one. Knees come down. Child pose. Hallelujah. From child pose, let again move forward so that your shoulders are on top of your wrists. And we're going to allow those hips to drop down. Maybe walk yourself a little bit more forward to find a stretch in the belly, like a small upward facing dog. Now let's just do a couple more core work here for the deeper core. As you lower all the way down to the ground, let your right hand come under your right elbow and your left fingertips forward slightly. Then the elbow is still bent. We're gonna shift up and over to the left side and stack the right leg on top. Maybe even scissor it back. Come back to center, switch arms and lift to the other side. Now, as you release back down, you're gonna bring the hands to where they were, switching, but see if you could maybe use less of the hands as you rock over onto your side and just really use your core center to lift you up and to the other side. Use your core to lift you up, yeah. Just fingertips. Back to center, now let's take the arms out of the equation altogether and just go like this with the hands. Relax, shoulders. Let's do it again, okay? Shift, 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 holy shit. Ugh. And see if you can kind of, just kind of balance and back to center. And to the other side. Oh, yes. Right? Relax. Strength. Do it one more time on each side. Have some fun with it. And then to the other. This is a lot of work. Doesn't look like a lot of work, but it is. Oh. <laughs> you look like slugs. Come on back to the ground. Good job. This time we'll open up into locusts. Just let those arms go sideways. Squeeze your legs and glutes. Lift your heart. Lift your legs. And for five, four, three, two, one, relax and see if you want to come back into that child pose. It might feel like a nice counter pose. All right, coming back up into our hero pose. If it feels okay to sit on your heels, do so. If it doesn't, find easy sitting pose. 
We're going to reach the arms all the way overhead. Palms come together. Hug into those inner thighs towards one another. And then bow forward into half tortoise. See if you can keep your butt on your heels as much as you can. As your forehead comes to the ground, keep activating those hands into the ground. And now keeping your bum on your heels, squeeze your inner thighs, squeeze your glutes, and see if you can use your core to rise all the way back up. Good job. From here, releasing the arms and take it into camel pose, coming up onto your knees, hands stack behind the hips, press the hips forward, open your heart, squeeze your glutes. Some of us will take it into a half camel. I like to curl my toes under. Some of us will hold the heels and press forward. Some of us will continue to stack the hands on top of the sacrum. As you engage your quads muscles and glutes muscles, come on out of the pose. Plant your hands on the ground. Take some arches and curls. And then arrive into your seated position with the knees bent. I want you to walk your feet more forward than you think. So I don't want the feet right here, but rather more forward. And from this place, we're good going to plant the hands behind us, behind the shoulders, and just take some back and forth rocking motions. At some point, taking the opposite hand and turning, 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 as if you're reaching to the back seat of your car to grab something. And then coming back to center and taking it to the opposite direction, reaching into a twist on the other side. And continue with this. I learned this from Kelsey, and it's a really beautiful twist, and it's extremely functional. Do it as many times as it feels good to your body. At some point, we're going to take it into mermaid pose on the right side. So your knees are going to both drop to the right, and you're either going to stay in mermaid, or you're going to take another version of this hip stretch, maybe a prone half pigeon. And you'll just adjust your body accordingly. If a prone half pigeon isn't available or you don't like it, you can stay in mermaid. Maybe you're still lifted versus collapse down. We have others taking different variations, like a double pigeon. Finding the spaciousness within your own body now that the energy has moved around. And softening enough to welcome the light that's coming from the inside and the outside light from the sun and your own inner golden light. And 
And stay here for another three long breaths. The shoulders are soft. The belly is soft. Let the light saturate every inch of your body. Just imagine light. Soft upper back. And then slowly come on out of the pose. Transitioning to the other side. You might return into your seated position. Take uh, another couple of motions before finding your mermaid on the left side. Staying there for as long as needed before coming down further or changing the posture to suit your body. in my contemplation of this being human is that as soon as we come to stillness there's a tendency to go in the head and as soon as you find yourself doing that just come back to the experience of stillness itself what does it feel like to be still in the body Can you let the stillness inch by inch, you know, saturate and let the body soften enough, breath by breath. And then there's this wedding of breath and sensation. This wedding of sensation and presence. And the sense of being held by the sounds of nature. which is itself being held by the ground of being. Taking your time to slowly release out of the pose to make it onto your backs again. As you arrive onto your back, allow your body to move into any pose or movements that are lovely to you.
And once you felt comfortable in your movements, bringing you back to stillness on your backs or on your bellies, if you choose to take Shavasana on your belly. Give yourself, just give yourself to the ground. Maybe at some point throughout your days, you have wished or hoped for a certain sigh of relief from your worries or so take it now this is it and just for the next few moments imagine a leaf falling slowly off the tree. Surrendering to the process. Completely held and carried through and lightly placed on the ground. Imagine yourself as the leaf held and gently relinquished to the Earth Mother. Sarvesham Svastir Bhavatu Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu Sarvesham Manalam Bhavatu Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. a deep in breath together, letting it go. And taking your time to slowly find some movements throughout your body.
inviting your bodies over to your fetal position on the side, preparing for the close of our practice together, coming up to seated, And as we join together with the palms rubbing together at heart space, planted on the heart, maybe the belly, once again leveraging and resourcing not only the ground and the light, but also the sense of togetherness. We're all in the same boat. And we may not have similar exact experiences on that boat, but we're all experiencing what it is to be human during challenging times. And bowing to that shared experience, we close with the sound of Om, a cleansing breath. Inhale. Thank you for allowing me to teach you today. The togetherness within me bows to the togetherness within you. Namaste.